Nowhere else in the world outside of the film industry will somebody try to convince you that the thing that you want is not actually what you want. James, off camera, you mentioned an interesting analogy based on a conversation with your friend about distribution. Yeah, so distribution and also like what audiences' expectations are. So, um, you know, there's, there's a couple things that I would talk about within that, but like, you know, for, for instance, like I know for me, uh, I have a responsibility when I'm making a movie for, for an audience is like, you know, when I make that movie, they're, they're spending that same $7.99, whether it's, you know, my movie or a studio movie to rent it right or to buy it or whatever 499 whatever it is it's the same amount of money so i have a i have a responsibility to the audience to over deliver with beyond my budget as well as like give them what they're expecting of a movie like this so like if i you know if they if they if they're ordering this movie and this movie is a turkey sandwich i can't come out and then say okay well i know you were expecting a turkey sandwich but let me give you some lasagna like you don't order that at a restaurant and somebody comes out with like lasagna and goes, well, I think you'd like the lasagna more. That doesn't work that way. So the way I think of it also is like, you know, when I'm talking to distributors, distributors are expecting a certain thing. So when you explain to them the movie, you know, they, they want to know what comes in it. So you could explain what's inside the turkey sandwich, but you can't say, guys, 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 I know you want a turkey sandwich, but why don't we get some pizza? Like it, it's just that if they want a specific thing, that's what they want. And so it's, it's you got to find how to be creative within making that thing versus trying to convince them that they're actually hungry for something completely different. And so that, I, I, I like to relate things back to food because food is a universal language in the sense that everybody, no matter how much they know about movie, they know enough about food, right? And when you think about food in that sense, it, it, it takes the ego out of it because it's not like, you know, it's not like you going like, oh, well, you know, my personal dreams and goals for this sandwich or this. You start going, okay, well, I could add this to it. I could add this to it. I could add this to it. It takes the ego out, right? So I think a lot of that is, is you got to take the ego out and look at it as like, you know, film is where, you know, creativity meets commerce, like business meets commerce. So you can't forget about the business side of things. So business is expecting to have things that hit certain beats, have a certain amount of action, have a certain amount of cast, yada, yada, yada. So you have to fit within those confines. And I think if you think of it outside of the box, instead of like, well, my dream and my creativity and my this is one way, and you think of it outside of that, there's the movie that you're pitching to the people that are financing and buying the movie, and then the conversation you're having with the actors are, well, my dream, my this, my that. The conversation you're having with the DP is, well, my dream, my this. That's good. Keep that in there. But when it's two different conversations you need to be having, if that makes sense. So I think if you are outside of yourself and look at it in, in, as, as a concept of food, it all kind of makes more sense. And it sounds like sillier to you if you're like, oh, well, they ordered a turkey sandwich, but I want to give them like, you know, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. You know, but if 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 you are able to understand the standpoint of you know the financier or the distributor of this is what they expect, then you can be creative within that world. I think that's a fun analogy. I like that. Did you ever try to offer you know spaghetti bolognese to a distributor and they wanted you know the Cobb salad and so you learned that the hard oh, way? I feel like every <laughs> single every single thing that I have learned is from some type of trial and error where like I, you know, I, I, I went in there and I was like, you know, I, I remember I was pitching, you know, unnamed distributor a movie and they'd done like a bunch of action movies and stuff like that. And I was like, listen, this thing, we could possibly submit it to Sundance. Like they were looking for something that would go into Redbox. Like, they, you know, you don't go in there going like, guys, this is going to be a Sundance darling to a company that does movies that they want for Redbox and Netflix. You know, you, you got to understand who who the buyer is and and what their order is. <laughs> there you go. Right, right. It's like their order for exactly. you know, one of these food delivery services. Exactly. And so if you're changing it on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, imagine imagine just this conversation. Like you call me right now and you say right. like, "James, I want to order like, you know, try try ordering I, I don't know, like some pizza." Sure. Okay. Right so, now. um, hey, is this um James James delivery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is James Delivery. We, oh yeah, uh, hey, uh, yeah. So I think I'll have the. Um, do you guys have the turkey on? Do you have gluten free? Right. So I, interestingly enough, I really think you should have some sushi. Okay. We've never made sushi before. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I think this sushi would be really tasty. 
Okay. Well, I was actually more hoping for like turkey with um, gluten-free bread. Maybe well, I know I told Swiss. you I make turkey sandwiches and this is a turkey sandwich business, but we're making sushi today. So sushi is what you should have. You see, like if you if you get out of that whole like mindset, you're like, this is a ridiculous conversation. <laughs> Nowhere else in the world outside of the film industry will somebody try to convince you that the thing that you want is not actually what you want. Sure. So I think that once you once people start to think like that, like you know, it's it's business to the distributors. Yes, they love the creative side, but it's business to them. It's business to the producers. So when you start to think in the business standpoint, they want the thing that they're buying. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's a fun way to present it because it does make sense. If if mm-hmm. you're calling up with one order and someone's trying to convince you of a completely different thing, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know? exactly. It makes no sense. It's it's almost insulting. It's like, why right. is this person trying to convince me to get something else? Like, what if they're vegan? Like, right. you know, well, like they don't they don't eat that. Sure. You know, so so I think find a way to be creative within what the person wants versus trying to convince them they want something completely different. Right. And what if you're you're realizing that they want to stick with a certain food group, for lack of a better term, but they want it very limiting and you want to add things to this thing. So they want a turkey sandwich, but they want it very bland. But you want to maybe have focaccia bread and you want lettuce and to, you, you want to spice it up. So the weirdest thing that you'll experience is most of them don't care if you spice it up. They're okay with that. They're like, oh yeah, they like the idea of, oh, you want to do this, you want to add more, you want to add more turkey, you want to add more action, you know, you want to add a little bit more action to this, great. You want to, you want to throw in like a, a little bit more, uh, you know, of a, a character arc here, great. You know, a little bit of mustard, great. Like, you know, they're they're cool with that. Um, they just don't want you to just go so far that suddenly it's a salad. I see. Okay. You know. So you have to you have to know what the limits and borders are of that. Right. And is there a time and a place to present your ideas, or all that should be done in the preliminary meetings with with a distributor? The distributors mostly want to understand the basic concept of the movie. They want to understand like, okay, this is. Um, you know, an action movie where guys rescuing this person from a burning building and blah, blah, blah. They want to understand that, right? Uh, they want to understand how often action happens. What are the big set pieces? Like, you know, oh, there's this the fight that happens on a jet ski. Great. They want to know all these different things, right? But they don't, uh, they don't necessarily, I mean, they, they do want to read the script and know that it's a good script. Um, but when you're pitching them initially, I don't think you need to get as far into uh, all that other stuff. I think what you can do is once they're interested and they're hooked and you're going back and forth is you could go like, hey, I think this would be much better if we do this. And like that could that could help for sure. But I think, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's better to kind of, you know, expand as the movie expands. Do you ever have a distributor change it on you where they say, I know we said X, Y, and Z, but we're actually going a different direction? No, I've never had that You've happen. never had that happen. Okay. That's no, good. no, I've never had that happen. You make it sound like you're in talks with distributors before you make the movie. Yeah, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, not and not always because I'm I'm sometimes I'm work for hire, so I'm hired as the director, and so maybe the producer was in in talks or whatever. I might not be in those conversations, but a lot of the time where I'm producing and directing, or I'm you know just producing, I'm 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 talking with the distributor because uh, a lot of the time you know in this world you want to know that the, the distributor. Uh, it would be interested in a movie like this with a certain type of cast or this before the movie's ever made. So that's best to have those conversations and to find, to I don't find know that someone it, that... I don't necessarily know if it's best. I, I just know that it's less risky. Ah, uh, because you could make an incredible film and then it turns out you could no make, one wants to buy it. Yeah, you could, you could make an incredible film that hits all the beats and a distributor would pay way more for it when it's done, right? But you could also make an incredible film that doesn't hit the beats and the distributor would pay less, way less for it when it's done uh, than if they, didn't, if they hadn't been made aware of it prior, if that makes sense.